Hello, this is Tony Hiller from RealClimateScience.com. A few years ago, I saw this letter to the editor. Start global warming debate with facts and truths. The letter said, the 1930s were warm in the United States, but they were cool globally. In fact, your readers can see that data for themselves at the NASA website. No one can objectively look at the data and conclude that the 1930s were warm. They certainly were not anywhere near as warm as 2014. So let's take a look at the NASA website. They have this drawing showing that Earth warmed a little bit from 1920 till about 1940, then was fairly flat until the mid-1970s, and then started warming very quickly after that. And the graph shows very close agreement between four different groups. And according to this drawing, 2014 was much warmer than the 1930s, just like the reader said. In this video, I'm going to examine whether or not this drawing is an accurate representation of Earth's temperature since 1880. All four of these temperature data sets are based largely on data from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. That graph shows the same thing, warming from 1910 until about 1940, then fairly flat until about 1980, then a lot of warming over the last 40 years. NOAA shows about 1 degree Celsius warming since 1979. This data set is generated from thermometers on the Earth's surface. But satellite measured temperatures of the lower troposphere only show about half as much warming and very little since 1998. According to global warming theory, the lower troposphere should be warming faster than the Earth's surface, but the graphs show the exact opposite. That is the first big red flag that there's something wrong with this graph. Now let's look at another very big red flag. In 1989, Tom Carl, who was NOAA's longtime head of climate analysis, said this. Analysis of warming since 1881 shows most of the increase in global temperature happened before 1919, before the more recent sharp rise in the amount of carbon dioxide. While global climate warmed overall since 1881, it actually cooled from 1921 to 1979. That's a very different story from what the current NOAA temperature graph shows. In 1989, Tom Carl said most of the warming occurred between 1881 and 1919. But the current NOAA graph shows the exact opposite. It shows lots of cooling from 1881 to 1919. The data has been altered. And in 1989, Tom Carl said that Earth cooled from 1921 to 1979. But once again, NOAA has altered their data. They now show lots of warming from 1921 to 1979. So we know now that the current NOAA temperature graph is not consistent with their data from 1989. Now let's go back in time another 15 years to 1974. World is getting cooler. Global cooling may be a cause of the devastating African drought, now in its sixth year. Some scientists believe that expansion of the cold polar air caps pushed the monsoon rain belt southward. This 1974 graph was from the National Center for Atmospheric Research. It showed lots of cooling after 1940, and it showed that 1970 was actually cooler than 1870. This 1974 graph from the National Center for Atmospheric Research tells a very different story from the current graphs we were looking at earlier. In 1971, NASA's leading climate scientist predicted a new ice age as early as 2021. But you would never know about the cooling from the current NASA graph because they've changed the data. In 1974, the National Center for Atmospheric Research showed that the 1930s and 1940s were very warm globally. And the historical record backs this up. In 1939, scientists reported that temperatures in the eastern Arctic had warmed nearly 16 degrees during the winter. In 1939, all of the glaciers in eastern Greenland were rapidly melting. The leading Arctic expert at the time, Dr. Hans Allman, said, it may without exaggeration be said that the glaciers of Greenland, like those in Norway, face the possibility of a catastrophic collapse. In scientific papers, he documented the rapid retreat of glaciers during that time and the very rapid warming in the eastern Arctic. The physical evidence is that the 1930s were very warm, yet these graphs from government agencies show the 1930s as being among the coldest years on record. 
In Australia, Canberra, Melbourne, and Adelaide all set their all-time temperature record during January 1939. Most of the forest land in Victoria burned during January 1939. The forest fires of 1939 nearly brought koalas to extinction. During the 1920s, Glacier National Park was melting so quickly that experts predicted all of the ice would be gone by 1948. Experts were making similar predictions about the glaciers in Norway. It was reported in 1952 by the leading American Arctic expert, Dr. Carlson, that the glaciers of Norway and Alaska were only half the size they were 50 years earlier. In 1958, the Arctic was melting so quickly that the New York Times predicted it would be ice-free within the lifetime of their children. But government agencies show these years as being very cold. The graphs are not consistent with the historical record. In 1958, the New York Times said that the Arctic was melting very quickly and would be ice-free soon. But by 1970, the story had completely changed. July 18, 1970, U.S. and Soviet press studies of a colder Arctic. The United States and the Soviet Union are mounting large-scale investigations to determine why the Arctic climate is becoming more frigid why parts of the Arctic sea ice have recently become ominously thicker, and whether the extent of that ice cover contributes to the onset of ice ages. Scientists wanted to stop the global cooling by sprinkling coal dust on the Arctic ice pack in order to melt it. And in 1978, the New York Times reported, International team of specialists finds no end in sight to 30-year cooling trend in Northern Hemisphere. But that cooling trend has since been erased by government agencies. These current graphs from government agencies are simply not credible. On the other hand, the 1974 graph from the National Center for Atmospheric Research was very credible. The 1974 NCAR graph showed that Earth was very warm during the 1930s and 1940s and then cooled very rapidly through the 1960s. It's pretty clear that the current graphs from government agencies are not at all consistent with the historical record. In this video, I showed you that these graphs from government agencies are simply not credible. In part two of this video, I'll explain the bad practices which have led to this sort of junk science. I think a lot of people will be shocked when they see the abuse of data and the abuse of the scientific method by these trusted government agencies. Stay tuned for part two. I should release it either tonight or tomorrow. And please visit Toto, Curie, Caesar, Upala, and Toki on the web at realclimatescience.com.